to talk too loudly so the kitten doesn't explode. Because when the kitten explodes, we're dead. Right? Today on game night, we're going to be reviewing exploding kittens. I'm Jason Headley. I'm Carl Lee. Let's get started. Welcome to game night. We are talking about exploding kittens today. And so this is a game for, I believe, two to five players. It's kind of a bit of a game of chance where there's, um, every player has like, I guess, five cards in the beginning and each card, or rather each person has a diffuse card, which is used to diffuse an exploding kitten, which you may draw in this main deck here. In the main deck, there's all these different types of cards, including an exploding, well, a couple exploding kittens. And if you draw an exploding kitten and you don't have a diffuse card or any other card to take action on, then you get eliminated. So it's an elimination game. So I'm going to explain some of these cards that you're going to get. Basically, when you draw a card, that's the end of your turn. So before you draw a card, you will play a card that's in your hand. And here are some of the different cards that we get. As I explained before, there's Diffuse. And there's really, really awesome art in here that Jason will talk about soon. And then there's a Nope card. Nope is basically if someone takes an action on you or takes an action that you're not, you know, really driving with, you drop a Nope and then they can't do that action anymore. And then this is a favor. It says donate your body to cat science. Uh, one player must give you a card of their choice. Okay, that's self-explanatory, right? And also, let's see, this is a shuffle card. Basically, if you know like that exploding kitten is in there somewhere, you can shuffle it up. Because basically, when you get an exploding kitten, right, and you diffuse it, you drop the diffuse card into the discard pile, and you get to put the exploding kitten back into this deck anywhere you want secretly. So it could be the next person, or maybe someone put it here, and you're like, oh my god, it's going to be me next. And so you have to shuffle. Okay, and then there's various attack cards. This one says, unleash some adorable penguin diarrhea. <sniffs> right? And end your turn without drawing a card. Force the next player to take two turns. So basically, you don't have to draw that card now. That could be the exploding kitten. You're like, haha, I'm gonna get that person next to me. And they have to take two cards at the end of the turn. Or rather, take two turns, right? Haha. -ha. And there's a skip card, which means I'm not going to go this time. Go base jumping using a pair of old lady boobs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then there's various cards that are just random, like this one. Uh, this is a ate his own eyeball zombie cat. Now, there are a lot of these type of cards that um, don't have specific actions on them. But if you get a double, two of these cards, you can use that to... Um, ask a player to give you a card of their choice. If you have three of a kind, you can demand a specific type of card from a player of your choice. And if you have five various cards, different cards, each different card, five different cards, <laughs> including action cards, you can then take a card from the discard pile, like maybe one of these very valuable Diffuse cards here. And you're like, I want this the diffuse card because I only had one and I didn't have any. Now I have another one. And then here's another one, another action card. It's called See the Future. Weave an infinity boner and love. Oh, whoops, and live forever. For it's the most sacred of boners. Um, this is the not safe for work version. Uh, maybe we should mention that. Uh, but there's a regular version as well that you can mix them two together. Um, so that's basically how you play. You can take as many actions, use as many cards as you want before you end your turn. So I could have played all these cards and then draw a card and then, oh, bam, exploding kitten in my face. And if I don't have a diffuse card, I am eliminated that exploding kitten does not return to the main deck. It goes in the discard pile. That's it. 
If you've heard about Exploding Kittens, even if you're not a board gamer, there's a good reason. Not only is it the most funded board game ever on Kickstarter, it's the most funded anything ever on Kickstarter. It made a lot of money, so people know about this game. Now, as Carl sort of mentioned, there are two versions. There's the clean version and the not safe for work version. If you get both versions, you can actually have up to 10 players, which is pretty cool if you're someone who likes to have party games. But the real heart of this game, the real reason you want this game, is that the artwork and the cards are ridiculous. You'll find yourself laughing just when you pick up a card. I found myself sharing my card with my neighbor just so they could see how funny it was, even though I didn't really need them to know what I had in my hand. Let's just take a quick look, shall we? Um, here we have, uh, a fall, you fall so deeply in, in love, it gives you both crazy diarrhea. Really? This one here is the shy bladder cat, which says, stop staring, I can't go if you're staring. What do we have next? This is, uh, oh god, what is this? You grow a magnificent squid arm and start slapping fat babies. Fat babies. What I'm trying to say is this game is out of control. I mean, I think it's easy to look at this as a not safe for work version of being, of course it's out of control. But even the safe for work version is out of control. The cards are hilarious and you'll find yourself giggling. Everything about this game, from the artwork to the style to the fact that anyone can pick up a play and play it, is so welcoming and inviting, and it's so freaking cute, and you just think it's so adorable, and then you pick up a card where an exploding kitten is coming out of someone's chest alien style. Or, or maybe, maybe, just maybe, you have the cat Schrodinger where the cat, where the cat has put him in the box. Or one of my personal favorite cards, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll already have seen this. This is an overly prolific mama cat. She is birthing her children with the pew-pew noise. What? Pew-pew. Everything about this game is adorable and fun, and the art is adorable and cute, and there's so much strategy to it. See, when you start playing, you think, okay, well, I just have to defuse my exploding kitten, but then as you get further into it, you start to really see the value in picking up, you know, an attack card, making someone go twice. How important it is to collect those five cards so you can get a second Diffuse card out of the deck, because Diffuse cards are very important in this game. By the end of the game, when it's just you and one more person left, you'll find yourself, as a total asshole, putting the exploding kitten right back on top so that the next person knows that if they draw a card, they're out of the game, so they're frantically trying to figure out what to do. And everyone in the table is switching sides constantly because they want to see the game keep going because they don't want to see that last person pick up that card. It, gets, it goes from super calm at the beginning to people politely picking up cards to the end where people are slapping cards down and noping each other and trying to trade in two to get one but also noping that. And then there's that exploding kitten that ends it all and it's all so cute and hilarious in the meantime. So Carl, thoughts on Exploding Kittens? Um, when we first heard about it and saw it, I was like, wow, this game looks so much fun. We should probably get it. Um, and it is. I think that maybe you might get tired of it if you play it too much. So you might want to bring it out once in a while when you have a bunch of friends together maybe. So it's perfect for that. It's not something I think I would play every day or yeah. want to play, you know, multiple times a week, I guess. Um, but it is really cute and funny, and, um, the art is awesome, yeah. uh, by the oatmeal dude, and then, um, what else did I want to say about it? I mean, I'll say, I think it's really great. I wouldn't build your entire game night around it, because it's a, yeah. it's a warm-up game. Like, it's either a warm-up oh. game, or, like, an in-between game. It, it lasts, the rounds last about 15 minutes. It's really quick. I mean, the most we found ourselves wanting to play in a row was like two, maybe three times, but then you want something a little bit deeper. Now, if your gaming group has a lot of people or you want to invite new people who have never played games and you want something a little bit simpler, but something that's a step up from the lowbrow of Cards Against Humanity, this is a good place for that. Like, this is good mm -hmm. for, that, for that group of friends who come on over, have game night. They're like, I don't know, I've never played a game before. Like, this is good for them because it's a really easy game to get people into and laughing and having fun really quickly. Yeah, and I'm a big fan of these very simple type of games that all you need are yeah. cards, they're very portable, and you can teach anyone to play very, very easily. Yeah. And I think these type of games are are the best, really. I, right. If I were to design a game, I want to design a game that was very simple and condensed, unless I was trying to make something really complicated. Right. But for the most part, it's very simple, and it's like things, games like uh, Dead Man's Draw or 
or even that new uh, resistance game, or coup or yeah, like Sunny Ich yeah. Sunny Ichi, yeah. Yeah, like I love those type of games because they're so self contained and easy to get yeah. and but it's a lot of fun also. Right. Um, I'm really looking forward to potential um, expansions. Like, I mean, they, they could totally do like a franchise of exploding things. Penguins, you know? puppies, babies. Yeah, we have all puppies, kinds of ideas. Exploding anything, right? Yeah, but um, like you said, it's it's not. I wouldn't make my whole game night around it. You know, yeah. we played this every time we played this. We played it in conjunction with a deeper game. Like the other night, we played Eldritch Horror and then played this to like cool down off of that, and that was yeah. perfect. But I wouldn't yeah. be like. Come on over. We're just gonna play eighty-five games of exploding kittens because yeah. it would probably get old really fast. Um, and I will say, I really do think the art makes it. Like the mechanics are good, but if the art wasn't so yeah. hilarious, this game would not be quite as awesome as it right, is. Right, that's true. Um, it could really be a is a good drinking game. Yeah. I, it could work at a party too because the thing about party games is that you don't want things to be so complicated that people aren't really going to have the attention span for it. Right. So this might be okay for like a party, yeah. you know. Um, and I don't want to go too long here, but I just want to mention this is one of the best and most fun and most unique rule explanations I've ever had. It's really hilarious. There's even like funny artwork within the pages of the rules and it's really engaging and it's fast to learn even for the person who's going to be teaching the game. So I really appreciate that too. Like it really made it made learning learning the game almost as much fun as playing the game, and I think a lot of games could learn from. I that. also want to mention that I think the quality of the cards are pretty good. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're yeah. shiny and they they look textured and they seem pretty solid. You know. So as far as playing it or passing on it or buying on it, I'm gonna say buy it. It's pretty affordable. It's a really fun game. You'll get a lot more fun out of it than I think it's way better than really popular games like Cards Against Humanity or Dixit. Um, so I say buy it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Buy it? Yeah, cool. buy it. All right, guys. Well, that is our game night episode for this week. You can find us on Twitter. I'm at Cucamonga Cat. This is at Carl K. Lee. You can find us on Instagram. I'm at Easy Cat. This is at Carl K. Lee. Carl is also on Board Game Geek, and he puts all of our videos there, so check us out there. The light for L Y T H E L Y G H T 4. Yes, and I'll probably write that out too so it's a little easier. Right. And um, please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, we have a new board game store that just opened around the corner from us. We're hoping to show you some of that new place because it Geekery looks awesome. Geekery HQ. Yep. Astoria. Um, yeah, we're really excited for them. I mean, when I say around the corner, I don't mean like how people normally say around the corner. It's like five blocks away. It's lit. like I could roll out of bed and be mm -hmm. there. Um, so yeah, and we will see you guys. How about in a week? In like so. a week. We can ask. Sure. Yeah. How about that? Cool. How about that? How about that? Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>